Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today I'm real excited because we're going to learn about how to make this peacock. This peacock is absolutely gorgeous and all the kids pictures came out beautiful with this technique. This is easy for kids for all ages. Um, I did it with fourth grade. I'd say uh, basically all ages but if you want something that looks similar to this look anything from say second, third, third on up will get a very similar look to this. Um, because you're dealing with just basic shapes, basically a circle. And we're going to learn uh, brush control. And that's what I'm, I'm looking at for the kids when I'm looking at this project. I'm looking at brush control and texture and patterns for my learning goals. Um, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do though is with the kids, we start out right with paint. And I have the paint on my tables and we go right into the paint. And I use a tempera paint and I prefer, some of these are premium, some of these are not, but I do prefer the premium because the premium paint is much more opaque than a student grade paint. So if you have an opportunity, you can do that. You can do this with acrylic paint, anything, oils, uh, but temper works well, or a craft paint, which is basically like a, a an acrylic paint in a tube or an acrylic paint in a bottle. Um, but what I do with the kids is we go ahead and we start out right with paint. I don't do a pre-sketched drawing here. Um, if you want to, if you make a mistake, you can always change it out. And this is a pretty small piece of paper here. Um, I find my center. So with the kids, we go ahead together, we find the center, or I post the, the instructions on a board. But go ahead, find your center, and then what we're going to do is, from the center, we're going to jump over, say, two fingers. Uh, depending on your paper, actually. You can even go over, now, say this is, uh, uh, I'd go over, say, halfway, if I want to fill up this space in this scale. So find the center, and from the center, mark edge, center, halfway, and then go ahead and do your arch first. So we're going to do a rainbow arch right in here. And now when you're using the brush, put your fingers near the metal, rest your hand. If you want to get a nice little skinny, skinny line, rest your hand on the page and drag around. Yeah, see how beautiful creamy this paint is. Now you're going to do the, the bottom half of the circle. So down and up, almost like the letter U. Let the hairs drag behind. Again, hold that brush straight up like a soldier. I'm going to tip it sideways so you can actually see me paint that circle. And then smooth this out. Any little edges come back over and go real slow. This is brush control. You want to demonstrate that you have control of that brush and your edges. The neatness in these edges really count. That's why I say third grade, fourth grade. Um, because then they can show me this brush control here. Now, if you did it with younger kids, you know, this is gonna be sloppier, this, this shape here. Um, now go ahead from this circle now. Basically the circle I've, is one quarter of the width of the page. So this is from here over is half, from the center over is half, and then I did one quarter is the circle. On the other side I have this half, which is plain. Now, I'm going to make the body of the peacock. So I'm going to come off of the head. So I start at the top of the circle, bring my brush down, and then I'm going to continue this gradual line right to the bottom of this page. Now, this is, this is not a straight line. Look, this is the center straight. So it is a slight diagonal. Now, I jump over not as um, almost as wide as that circle and you can measure using fingers if you want to do finger measurements okay and then I'm gonna bring this slowly I'm gonna I'm aiming toward this area here but I'm gonna come in first to give it a little graceful neck and then basically it's a brush thickness here and now I'm gonna smooth out all these lines so it's a gradual line going from the neck down to the body. Once I have it drawn in, then I'm going to paint it in back and forth smooth. Now, if you're doing a larger scale paper, you can use the, the flat brushes. This is just a very small, round brush going back and forth, smooth it in. 
When I do this with the kids, I let them use a bigger piece of paper, and we use the flat brushes, or this is, um, this is a filbert brush right here. A filbert's a nice one because you can draw, get some nice clean edges with it, and then fill in beautifully. Or you can use the flat right here and fill that in back and forth smooth. But basically, you want it to be really smooth. Once we have the head and the part of the body drawn, now again, the rest of the body is not showing. It's cut off from the page. We want a very large, we're doing a very large close up of this peacock. So once we have that done, we're gonna start now on these feathers in the back of the peacock. And these are called concentric circles. And a concentric circle is a circle inside a circle, inside a circle, inside a circle, inside a circle. It could be kind of like an infinity circle. And if you look around your house or your room or the classroom, you may see some concentric circles. I know our air conditioning ducts have concentric shapes and our speakers have these cool concentric shapes on them. So you might be able to find them around your classroom. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and paint these in. I'm gonna first start off, you can see the first color that I did was the green. And it was what matches the body of your peacock. So without switching color, we're gonna go ahead and do some concentric circles. Well, let me show you how you do that. You load up your brush. If you need to rest, it's, you can rest your wrist or your, or your arm on the paper and hold your brush straight up like a soldier. Now, I want these concentric circles to be almost the size of that head. So I barely touch the surface of the paper. I'll, I'm going to tip it sideways so you can see it a little bit better. I'm barely touching the surface of the paper with the tip of my brush. And I tell my kids, we're just lightly kissing the paper and let the hairs drag behind and go slow. If your brush starts to dry out, you can turn your brush or just dip back in. The tip of the brush isn't gonna hold lots of paint forever, so you're gonna have to dip back in frequently. So go slow and let the hairs drag behind. Now, I wanna leave space, and we want this to be equal distance space. I didn't do it really close to the head, you notice. I jumped way up. Now, you can, you can do it through measurement, through fingers, or just through estimation. And so I'm gonna leave, this is gonna be my estimation, my, my, um, my beginning of how I'm going to create my circles. So this will be the, uh, the, the original space. So I wanna match this same distance to all of these circles. So I'm gonna skip a space that's this distance, my original distance, and I'm just estimating. You can see this is a little bit, gonna be a little bit closer. And I kinda want my circles to be the same size. If they're off a little bit, that's no big deal. And if they're not exact circles, that's no big deal too. Just do the best you can in making these circular shapes. I'm gonna come off here. Now, this one is gonna end up going off my page, which is fine, it kinda helps composition. And I'm gonna come around and I'm letting the hairs drag behind the brush as I go around, just keeping it equal distance. I'm gonna skip down here, make another one, and I'm creating the space. And I'm filling up the whole page with this. Now, if I have a, an area that's at the edge of the page, I'm gonna do a half circle or semi-circle just a curve to match the circle. I'll show you here, it would be normally go off the page. See, but my page ends here. And then fill up the whole page with that. Now there's one way you can do it. You can have it come and fill up the entire page or if you wanna have it like a side view peacock, you can have just, here's an example of a student work where we did just half of the page and it's kind of like the peacock on the side view and the feathers will end this way. It's just your different perspective on peacocks. And here's a student example where, from fourth grade, where they use the entire page of circles. Work up one area and then if you have time, you know, finish the rest. That's up to you. It's, it's just 
basically how you want your composition. Some people like to add more things down below. Maybe you can hand paint a, a scene down below. Um, for this one, I'm just going to do a complete peacock circle. And let the hairs drag behind. And you can see how my circles aren't perfect. You can see how, because we're doing it so fast, you can see how some of them are smaller than others, which is okay. That just makes it more natural, more like a hand painted. All right, so there's the, the, um, neck, the first step. And usually this is day one of art class. And then um, day two, we do the rest. Uh, for the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm just going to dry this off with a paper towel. We're going to go into another uh, color fa family or color value, and we're going to do another ring around the outer edges. And you can see how this paint's a little bit more transparent. That's why I kind of like the premium better. It used to be that this student grade paint was more opaque and now they're making it so that it's more transparent which I'm not liking for this project um, so you know sometimes you want that transparent look sometimes you don't uh, now what the next step is is we're going to do rings so we're going to go ahead and paint another line letting the hairs drag behind the brush and we do another row of color around the whole thing. We're creating concentric circles, which is a circle inside a circle, and we're also creating a pattern to the peacock, and this becomes the peacock feathers, the peacock feather patterns. And now we would continue this throughout the whole peacock. Every one would be the same to create your pattern. Um, here's an example of the next step done, right here. That way you don't have to watch me do it. Now, from here, what we do is we then do another circle inside. And for this circle inside, what I have the kids do, just to have them show me more of their brush control, is I have them leave in this area, which is optional, I have them leave a ring of white showing. So I'm going to put a dot in the center, and I have them choose a darker value. You can see how I have this dark blue value. So we're going to put a, a circle in the center, and I'm going to slowly get it a little bit bigger so that I end up with a narrow ring of white showing. I'm using just the tip of my brush and I'm coming around. So this is our step three with our third color. A thin, thin ring coming around. And I would repeat this for the entire uh, peacock. And I'll show you an example of that. I think I have a student example there. Let's see. Here's another student example where they have started. Well, here's the white rings. I'll show you this. Here's a student example here that shows the white rings. Now, once we've done the white rings, then we start in with our detail on our face. The beak, the eyes. There's another student example here. And again, these are fourth grade. Here's another student example here. Now you can see where, we for, where they forgot to make the white ring. You know, a mistake here or there is fine. Once you add more of this, it doesn't even show in the end. So the next step now is to go ahead and do up your beak and your eyes. Here's another really cool example. I love this color combination here of the values of, of purples and, and blues. So let me show you how to go ahead and do that. The beak and the eye detail. Now for the beak, I'm just gonna use a color you can use an orange value, a brown value, um, basically any color beak you want. I am just going to use a value that I have here for me. And what I do with the beak is I find an area, and now you want to think about how the bird is looking. You know, if he's looking up, sideways, down, 
you don't want to have it end so it's real close to the edge of the paper. I'm going to have him look and I'm going to kind of blend it right between the two of these. He's going to be looking kind of downward and I'm just going to come out really thin and I'm just scratching the paper with a very fine line. And then I'm going to bring this back up and I'm not going to touch the end again. I'm just going to kind of fill in here. Right, I'm not going to extend it and make it thicker. And then we're going to just finish painting this in here. Then we're going to do some detail on the eyes. And if you have a dark paint, painted peacock background, you want to choose a lighter value for your eyes. And you go ahead and you do a, um, this is about the size of a pea. You want a good size compared to the size you're using, depending on the paper. You want a good size eyeball. I always exaggerate the eyes and make them a little bit bigger. Just so that they show up better. You want to stress importance to that eye. Then you're going to let that dry. And actually you can start working in while that's drying on the feathers. You want to make sure that's completely dry before you do the detail of the eyeballs. You can use, now when we do the feathers for texture, so this is adding texture, um, we're gonna then, I do little strokes and I'm going in a downward direction, little tiny short choppy strokes in a downward direction. And I'm doing it in the same color family as the, the peacock body. So blues and blues, reds and pinks, if you did it in purples, you'd be doing purple and light purple and dark purple and medium purple. So I'm doing short choppy strokes coming down in my blue values. I can even add some of this turquoise blue too. Then I'm going to uh, dry my brush and I'm going to add a little bit of white, just a little bit on the brush. And with the white, I'm barely going to dip in, see that, it's a very small amount, and I'm going to lightly just brush this randomly in short choppy strokes. Now this is only about a quarter of an inch stroke, and I'm lightly blending it into that wet paint. It's the same color family as the background blue, and I add white, and when you add white to a color, it creates what's called a tint of color. So it's making the lighter values. And it creates these little short choppy strokes on top of each other, create, now that's barely touching the surface here, just the tip of my brush is brushing. And it creates that feathery feel, it creates the texture. Now, I wanna add some details to my eyes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna then do some line around the eye to give some eyelid. And then I'm gonna add just some cool patterns up at the top with the do some dots. And then when this eye is dry, you wanna make sure your eye is completely dry. Mine is still very wet. You can see when I touched it, I just messed it up. So you wanna wait for that. Let me see if I have a dry eye over here to demonstrate. Mm. I might not. Um, let me go ahead and show you with some darker color how to do the eye. Now you can use any value. You can use dark, dark, dark purple. That would almost be a black. You can use uh, a really dark blue, so it's almost black, or here is black. And again, make sure that that is dry before you do your eye. And to do the eye, you wanna draw across the page I mean across the eyeball, curve it down and curve it down. I kind of want it to be pointy. This is going to be more of glamorous. And you can do the bottom if you would like, just a little line in the bottom, curving up. And then the center is real important. This is just kind of a pressed dot, an elongated shape. Now I'm going to show you how to do some of the detail some of the fancy areas here. I'm gonna bring in some of this too. I want some of these long. Now remember, this is completely done in the background here before you start doing your eyes and stuff. I'm gonna bring up some, start at the edge and kind of fan out. Just some kind of fancier feathers sticking up at the top of my head. 
And then I'm gonna put some dots in. Just what I did was I dipped the back end of my brush into the white paint. And I'm just pressing real small, fine dots in an arched form above the peacock. And this gives a decorative feel to this area right in here. And that makes just a little bit of fancy. Now what I did with some of the kids, depending on their grade level that they're doing, is if they ended up, say they messed up their beak, what we did, and I think I have a couple examples of that. I'm gonna put some dots over here, like that. Now here's one that's almost completely done, right here. And in this example, what I did was, I painted in this background. What I had the kids do, and I didn't really care for having the kids paint it all in. I just had them paint some grass here if they had some negative space on this side. Um, but what I had the kids do, let me add some more. Well, I guess that's all right. What I was having the kids do if they finished early is they could even go around and add another row of dots even inside the peacock feathers here. And that gives an interesting pattern. Now I'm going to show you some examples of some kids that are almost done. And the different color combinations that the kids came up with um, were really interesting. So I want you to see some of the fourth grade examples. Um, here's this color family. I think I showed you this one already. And we've got some nice texture here. Here's a lot of values of your purple. Here's some more purple, and I like the, I even like the black accent coming along with these teal values here. This almost looks like the red, white, and blue with a little accent of green. Those color families are interesting. And this is a good start to here. This is interesting with this kind of salmon color. Nice shape to the peacock. Look at that beautiful shape here. And again, these are fourth grade examples. Now here's the example with the beak. So if they ended up not liking their beak, we took a cut piece of um, construction paper, cut out a triangle and glued it on. So that's another way of doing your beak. Here's an interesting color combination. I really like this color family that they chose. And then this one, the color families are gorgeous with the yellow. It almost gives it a turkey feel with that yellowy turkey. And then here's, again, a little bit of yellow pop, which is kind of an unusual color for your, your peacocks, but I really like that. It gives a brightness to it. So these are examples. Like I said, they haven't quite finished. What they're gonna do is they're then going to, the last step that you're gonna do is you're going to come around each circle now. And here's a really beautiful one too. And as you come around the last circle, you want them you're going to keep on expanding your circles until they touch, like here. And then you choose the lightest value of your fam one of the color families in here. So I chose purple, and then the last one I did is, the, is a tint of purple, the lightest value in my color family of purple. And I made a very light, light tint of purple, and I went around and I just kept on expanding these concentric circles until they all merged together. So basically, I didn't have a lot of my background. So it all just filled in. And that is basically how you do this beautiful peacock bird. And I showed you those examples of fourth grade and they did a gorgeous, gorgeous job. Um, 